The innovative flow control fuel can is designed to make pouring fuel more efficient and environmentally friendly. Paul Bone invented the fuel can after seeing a gap in the market and we asked his wife and company director Dawn Bone to explain how it works. The product's a 5 litre fuel can, which in the UK that's the legislation for a plastic fuel container. It has to be 5 litres maximum capacity. It has to have room for a 15% expansion. So what we did straight away was sink the filler hole, so you've still got room for expansion. Now this is now a sealed unit. If I take the cap off there and I've just finished filling something and I knock it over, nothing is going to come out. Because nothing comes out until you press the button, which is <laughs> here. So you've always make sure that that spout is in position before you press that button. And when you do press that button, it will empty the full five litres in just 15 seconds. Your normal can takes about a minute and a half. And there's no glugging because air comes in when you press the button. One of the great features of the product as well, which has proved to be extremely popular, is the fact that if you are using um, two-stroke uh, engines, whether you've got generators, whatever, whatever product you've got, you can fill the spout to the 100 mil mark, which is the first ring there, you then press the button, that oil will go into the can and you've got a 50 to 1 mix. If you need a 25 to 1 mix, you just repeat the process, give it a slosh around and you've got that mixed. Um, also, we are an approved supplier to the Forestry Commission. As I, cap goes on there, that keeps that spout clean. So whenever you're delivering the fuel, you're not delivering a load of dirt and gunge. So you're actually cutting down on your maintenance costs because you're keeping your fuel key, clean. Um, as I say, it's five litres, two handles, really easy to use. A lot of the companies we're talking to are the companies that use a fuel can several times a day. So it's a tool. It's not just your distress purchase. And what they're telling us is that they spill between 10 and 20% of fuel. So if your fuel bill is £4,000 a month as a company, as a ground maintenance company, by switching to these cans, you're already saving between four and £800 a month. And also, you're not polluting the ground or the water or wherever you are actually delivering the fuel. We're approved supply now to Wessex Water, Welsh Water, and several of these companies now are telling us that they're telling their contractors this is the only can that they'll allow their contractors to use when they're working for them. So the can is starting to certainly take off, and it's mainly because of environmental benefits that it provides and also the health and safety benefits. We asked Dawn about the history of flow control. Well, flow control was set up um, alongside um, our watering can company. And the reason we set it up separately was that we wanted to keep the IP in a separate company and also to raise finance as that is a completely separate entity. So it was set up really to exploit the IP of the flow control fuel can. And what's been your need for financing? Well, initially we, we um, funded a great deal of it ourselves. And, um, and as that time went on, that obviously became more difficult. You exhaust your own funds. Um, and then we did have problems in production and we had to bring it back to the UK from, from our first production, which was in Poland. When we had the tools in the UK, we discovered that there were problems with the tools that we'd, we'd actually bought. So then we had to look at making the alterations to the tools. So we had to go and, and seek some help. So we went to see Ken Jurek at the Innovation and Growth Team and we explained the problem we had and he recommended that we apply for a commercialisation fund grant from... Um, Finance South East, um, a commercialisation fund loan, should I say. Mm -hmm. So we started that process back in January, and during that time, we carried on making the, ca the cans, but the time that it took to actually assemble the cans was, was very, very long. We knew that we couldn't carry on with that as demand started to creep up. So we had to make the, the alteration to the tools so that we could actually make the cans more easily and put them together more easily. So that's why we had to apply for the commercialisation loan. At this stage, were you getting any help from your bank? No, we weren't getting any help from the bank at the time. Um, we were looking at other sorts of funding, um, but it seemed that the commercialisation fund was specifically for what we needed, which was to commercialise the product. Although we were producing, we'd had 2,000 produced and we'd sold them, we knew that the time it took to put them together meant that if we had an order for 10,000, 20,000, the time scale and getting those actually to the customer would be too long. So the tools had to be changed so that the assembly of the product could be streamlined. And that's why we went for the commercialisation fund, because it was actually specifically for this kind of project, which is what we wanted. I would say the process to apply for the loan, however, was really, really difficult for us to work with. We initially first sought the advice back in January. We then had to go through a pre-application 
um, bid. So we had to then give them a lot of information beforehand before we could go for the bid. And actually from the January, it took us until the June to actually get the funding. And was it difficult get, in terms of the amount of time it took, for instance, getting all the numbers together for them and going, actually doing the form filling? I think all of these things always are, whether you're going for a bank, whether you're going to Finance South East, wherever you're going, whether you're going for equity um, investor, you're always going to have to spend a hell of a lot of time putting in that bid. And they want to know everything. They want to see a business plan. They also want to understand where you're going to sell the product, how you're going to make the returns, where your sales are, where your sales leads are. Um, so there's a hell of a lot of market research and everything you have to put in. Some of that actually proved to be quite good for us anyway. A lot of the market research we were doing for the Finance South East bid proved to be quite useful to us as a tool anyway. But yeah, it did take a lot of time and a lot of effort. So at the end of the process, has it worked out for you? It has. The problem is that we are still a small company and manufacturing in the UK is not at its healthiest by a mile. And although we're only ordering a thousand at a time, we have to then find a time slot with our manufacturer. And the problem we have now is that they are dealing a lot with automotive parts. So if they have a delay making parts for Jaguar or Ford or whatever, it means we keep getting pushed back because we're just a tiny production run. And how do you think the, the banks um, uh, behave towards um, businesses such as yours? Uh, before this, when we had the watering cans, we applied for um, one of the um, government loan guarantee schemes. And although it wasn't in the um, spirit of what the government had set up that time, the bank did insist that we also remortgaged our home and put that as part of the, uh, the loan. That was very difficult for us and we, we, had, to, we had to do that. Um, so that was, that, that's been difficult. And I, don't think, I think the banks now are even asking for a bigger pound of flesh than they were before. And I think for companies that's going to be really, really difficult. Do you think in, as, as your company grows, you'll need to look at uh, your future finan financing options to, to enable growth? We certainly will. We, there are several routes to market for us. We can either license this product to a company, um, which obviously would be, would be great for us, or we've got to carry on manufacturing them ourselves. And what's happened in the last few months, because of health and safety legislation that's coming in, the product has really started to take off, and we're getting inquiries from a lot of very, very good companies about this product. So we will have to find more finance. We will have to look at expanding the company and being able to produce more cans than we are doing at the moment. And that's going to obviously have to come from somewhere. Um, we may look at um, angel investment. We may look at re releasing equity to, to some organisation. Or we may have to go to the bank when we get these orders that are coming in. But that's, that's for us to decide as a board and decide which way we go with that. So it's a never-ending uh, problem, isn't it? <laughs> it is. If you're going to grow, you, are, you can either stay a cottage industry, and for a lot of people, I absolutely understand that, and a lifestyle industry, and they just carry on with a lifestyle business and stay as they are, and they have a very good living from that. What we're getting now is, is actually demands outstripping our production. So we have to find some way, if we want to, to carry on with the company, in being able to increase our production, and now we're going to have to finance that somehow. And we've got to find a way to do that. We wish you lots and lots of that. Thank you. I think we're going to need it. <laughs>